So let's have a look at what's been said by Harry Maguire um, on his failed move to West Ham. First of all, let's start with the summer and not the now. He said, we just didn't come to an agreement. Uh, Man United were happy for me to stay and I was happy to fight for my place. I want to do that. And every time I train or play, I will give everything. Not good enough. Sorry, not good enough. I mean, I don't know what that's supposed to mean anymore. I mean, maybe it's getting somebody a little bit excited this morning, but I want to do every time I train or play, I will give everything. Not enough. Not enough. I don't care whether it's Bruno Fernandes, Marcus Rashford, and odd Casemiro, Harry Maguire. I will do everything and give everything when I play for this shirt. No, not enough. Sorry, mate. Sorry. It's just, it's just, no one's ever doubted that, mate. Nobody's ever doubted that you don't give everything. I think he's going to play against Brighton, so I'm going to come against this from a very mature angle. I don't want to see hate. I don't want to see boos. I don't want to see any of that. That's, I mean, obviously it's people's personal opinion, but I think he's going to play against Brian, so I hope he plays well. But again, he's just not got the memo, has he? You know, he's turned up in his speedos and we're going on a walk up Everest. It's going to be cold, Harry. You've got the wrong clothes on. It, he's just not getting it. I've got nothing. Every PRPC does, he misses the target. If he was throwing a dart at a dartboard, he'd hit himself in the arse. I don't know how, but he would. It's not about putting a statement out saying you'll give everything for this shirt. We ex we know that. It's about you're not good enough, mate. It's not about giving everything. That's not what it's about. And that that that's just rubbish PR again. Oh, just tell them you'll give everything, Harry, and you'll win them all back. No. You'll win people back by playing like a Man United centre-back, by playing like Vidic, by playing like one of the best centre-backs in the world. And you will never do that because you're not. And that's why you should have gone to West Ham. So when he says, uh, we didn't come to an agreement and Man United were happy for me to stay and I was happy to fight for my place and I'll give everything, he's completely missed the memo. And some people will read like that and go, oh, fair play to him. But he's completely missed that. You know, he's publicly admitting that he hasn't got the memo. He's saying, couldn't agree a deal with West Ham. Man United were happy to keep me. I'm going to stay and fight and give everything. Yeah, that's not really the point, mate. The point answer I want to know is, why couldn't you come to an agreement? And also, why are you staying to give everything when Man United want to sell you? United aren't happy for you to stay. They wanted to sell you. Like, if a, if a club says you can go to West Ham, we've agreed the fee, they're not happy to keep you, mate. That's not how it works. If, if Eric Ten Hag in January says, I've agreed a deal, deal with Spurs to Jadon Sancho, you can go and then Sancho doesn't agree the terms, Ten Hag's not going to go, yes! Oh, I'm so happy you're staying despite me saying you could go. It's just it's just really bad PR again. Um, Kevin Nolan's been on TalkSport. He uh, works at West Ham. He spoke about Maguire and said, look, we're disappointed that we didn't get him. Uh, we thought we were going to get him, but effectively it just came down to money. Uh, and Maguire's admitted it, it. they couldn't do an agreement. The bottom line with Maguire and West Ham is that West Ham wanted Maguire. Man United wanted him to go to West Ham and Maguire's team ruined the deal because they wanted money. Now, you can agree that he, he deserved a payout. You can say he doesn't deserve a payout. But the bottom line is West Ham wanted him. United wanted him to go and he decided to stay at Man United as fifth choice centre back. And that's the bottom line. That's what it is. Now, he's fortunate because, obviously, I think he'll play against Brighton. But you couldn't have known that in the summer. You couldn't have known as fourth choice centre-back or fifth choice centre-back that you were going to be playing games against, for Man United in week five because of an injury crisis at centre-back. He's very, very fortunate that he's going to get some game time. Um, but look, um, look... <laughs> I feel sorry for the player. He's going to play for Man United on Saturday. I hope he's man of the match. I mean, at some point, he's going to score a goal. His last two goals are for Scotland and Sevilla, and he doesn't play for either of them. So at some point, he will score a goal, and hopefully it will be on Saturday. And look, I want him to play well on Saturday. I, it's not that I think he's awful. I just don't think he's he should be at Man United, and I think he's proven that. But, um, you know, he doesn't help himself with what he puts out there. Saying that, you know, the West Ham thing is about greed. And the I'll give everything. Well, that's just not that's not ultimately going to be enough, is it? That, that that's clearly not been enough for the last couple of years. Um, also, he said I can deal with criticism. The first four weeks of the season were really hard because it was one game a week, uh, and the manager didn't select me. But we have lots of games coming up, and I'm sure I will play lots of games. Um, this is coming in via Fabrizio Romano. I mean, again, a, a look, um, I like the confidence. Um, I don't really have major criticism of what he's saying there. 
I don't, you know, might surprise people, but I don't really have a lot of problems with what he's saying there. I think it's good that he says he can deal with the criticism because he gets a lot of it. Um, and I agree, the first four weeks of the season must have been difficult because he was nowhere near the team. He got no minutes. In fact, he only got a few minutes against Arsenal because three centre-backs were injured. But he says that there's a lot of games coming up now and I'm sure he's going to play a lot of games. But the interesting thing about that is that will get people's back up. Of course it will. People will be like, what are you talking about? You're, you, you're arrogant. You know, you're going to play loads of games. What are you talking about? Of course, that's going to get people's back up. But the reality is, I think he probably will get a lot of game time. I mean, um, I certainly think he'll play against Brighton. Um, I don't think he's saying I'm going to get loads of good game time because I'm the best centre-back at Manchester United. I would say that, at, like Southgate, I mean, look, you've got an England manager saying this the other day. Southgate said there's a lot of injuries at Man United, so he's going to get a lot of games. I mean, an England manager publicly saying my first choice centre-back will get games for Man United because there's an injury crisis just is all kinds of wrong, isn't it? But I think that's probably what Southgate and Maguire have been talking about. Oh, you're going to get a lot of game time now because there's injuries. He's got to take his chance. Um, I don't think he'll keep that chance. I think the minute that Martinez is back fit, then it will be Lindelof and Martinez. And when Varane's fit, it will be Martinez and Varane. But how long is Varane going to be out for? Um, Martinez, we'll talk about in a minute. I think Maguire probably will play some minutes over the next month or so. But what I was going to say is, um, and this is the this is the mic drop moment for me, I don't think this is getting spoken about enough. And I'm, I know that you will agree with me on this. And I know we don't agree on everything and that's the way it's meant to be. But one thing that's been completely ignored here, I was thinking about this last night. I thought, I've got to bring it into the show. Um, Rafael Varane is a reason for Maguire to stay. Rafael Varane is injury prone. And Maguire may well have some, at some point thought, well, it's me or Lindelof to play with Martinez if, if Varane's out injured, so I'm going to stay and fight for my place. If Varane was a player that could stay fit for 90% of the season, then Maguire would be a complete and utter idiot to stay at United because he'd never play. Now, some might say he's a complete and utter idiot anyway, and he won't have thought what you've just thought, but I would hope he has. I think if you look at Varane, he's vulnerable to injury. And therefore, if Varane's going to miss half the season injured, then Maguire's a little bit closer to the team. But where this all went wrong for us, because you could quite rightly say, well, why has Ten Hag tried to sell Maguire knowing that Varane is injury prone? And this is the mic drop. We knew the plan. We're playing the plan next Tuesday. Man United spent so much time scouting Kim Min Jae last season. Man United spent so much time on that deal for Kim Min Jae last season. Man United thought they were going to get Kim Min Jae, and Kim Min Jae thought he was coming to Manchester United. But Murta and Arnold screwed the deal up, and Bayern Munich swooped in and took the player that Ten Hag had been working on all season. If Kim Min Jae had been wearing a Man United shirt, which he should have been, then Maguire wouldn't even be here because Varane would be out injured and Kim Min Jae would be playing with Martinez or Lindelof and Maguire would be gone. So when